Welcome to a Business Growth Mindset Podcast. I'm Christian Lavolsi, and I'm incredibly grateful to be here today and share this episode with you. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you my insider tips on how to avoid burnout and take back control. Everyone will experience fatigue, exhaustion, and a form of burnout in their lifetime. No one is immune to it, and as Ariana Huffington said, the land of burnout is not a place I ever want to go back to. This episode is packed with personal insider secrets on how to avoid burnout, and it applies to teenagers, students, corporates, tradies, CEOs, and entrepreneurs, and I know that it will help you grow and flourish. Jack Canfield said, you only have control over three things in your life, the thoughts you think, the images you visualize, and the actions you take. To all the business owners and entrepreneurs, the crazy ones, the believers, the doers, the clever makers, the action takers, and everyone else in between, this podcast was designed for you. If this is your very first time listening to my content, make sure that you subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and change your notifications alert settings so you don't miss future episodes. Are you struggling, um, exhausted, or not quite able to get going? Are you unsure if you are? Then this episode is for you. Burnout is a workplace issue. It's not just in your head. Emotional exhaustion and the mental load can be fought by decreasing demands, increasing support, and taking back control. It's a familiar story, that unspoken and untold feeling of not being able to get going. Yes, it's very common amongst CEOs and even more so from the ones that put up a great public front, the brave faces, so to speak. We have all been there at one point or another, and for many, it can be the end. Many CEOs I work with find it hard to speak about these invisible pain points of burnout, exhaustion, fatigue, regardless of their gender. For some, they have lost interest in what they supposed to be doing. Many are overwhelmed with their workload and they are disengaged with leading. They are tired, ambivalent, stressed, cynical, and overextended. Now, does this sound familiar? Studies have shown that 54% of CEOs have reported being exhausted. That's more than half. So if this is you, you're not alone. There are six contributors to burnout, and they are workload, control, reward, fairness, community, and values. Now, from my research and experience, CEOs are frustrated with their circumstances. They spend long hours at work or at functions. They miss out on important family time and watching their children grow up. Their relationships are often dysfunctional, they suffer from hypertension and stress, and more often than not, it all goes undiagnosed until it's too late. Some of the symptoms that generally are witnessed are emotional drain, mental instability, nausea, manic behavior, lack of reasoning, sleep deprivation, and frequent head colds. Yes, frequent head colds. If you're feeling alienated, underappreciated, ostracized, and underperforming, then these two are symptoms of burnout. It's critical to understand that you don't need to throw it all away to improve things. In fact, it only takes a few small changes to make huge improvements. Too often, CEOs think they have to go at it solo. They alienate themselves from their leadership team and their family because they can't appear to be weak. This is a myth. Vulnerability increases your ability to be authentic, and authenticity is known to improve workplace culture and increase support. One of my favorite Brene Brown quotes reads, vulnerability, vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. Vulnerability is not weakness. It's our greatest uh, measure of courage. People who wade into discomfort and vulnerability and tell the truth about their stories are real badasses. 
Now, I'm a trusted advisor and growth strategist to many CEOs, and I have the privilege to serve them and support them frequently. Many come to me for business advice and growth strategies, but the underlying issues are the invisible unspoken pain points that lead to burnout and fatigue. My purpose is to change the world one person at a time, starting with me, so that I can help others become the very best version of themselves. Having experienced firsthand the impact of fatigue, exhaustion, and burnout, I fully understand these invisible pain points, so I execute practical methods and tips for my clients so they can overcome the risk and avoid the burnout. You see, I focus on my clients so they can focus on their business and on their team. Along the journey, I also help them increase their profits, improve workplace culture, become a more diverse and inclusive leader, and as a byproduct, they take back control, they grow their business, they create more freedom and more time for themselves and their team. We do this in several ways, and today, I'm gonna to provide you with seven tips so you can start to implement these proven and effective solutions to break the cycle and take back control. I've also included a bonus for you right at the end that will supercharge you and provide you with abundance and prosperity. Burnout is a workplace issue, a statement supported by the World Health Organization and using your time differently will not prevent it. To avoid burnout, you need to live your purpose. Be true about your personality, your body, and your reality. It's not about the dream job, the big house, the fancy car, the social status, or the school uh, your children go to. Yeah, now, yeah, that is a real thing for some people. It's not even remotely related to the amount of money you make, shareholder sentiment, or respect. It's about your overall life, your values, your purpose, your interests, and your ability to align your will and your humility. So, Let's get started at number one. One, give yourself permission to step away. This sounds simple, but often avoided. It's okay to step away, regardless of your limiting belief that your company will still be there in five days time. If you think it won't, then you really need to hire an advisor to support you um, through this process. Nonetheless, I recommend that you give yourself permission and take five days off and spend it with the people that you care about the most because they are worth much more than your business. The first time I meet with interested clients, they often tell me how little time they have with their family and friends. I look at them in the eyes and stay silent. It makes them very uncomfortable. And then I ask, is it because you don't like them or because they don't like you? Uh, this is made some very defensive, but within a few moments, the dream client awakens because they realize all they're doing is making excuses. For some, this is so confronting, they decide I'm not the right fit, and I'm okay with that because if they can't see that they are bullshitting themselves, then they don't deserve my time and they sure as hell won't do the work. The point is, only you can give yourself permission to do what you need to do to get shit done. So right now, give yourself permission and practice what I'm sharing with you. It made a difference to me and now my clients, so I know it can do the same for you. Two, find your purpose. Mark Twain said, the, most, the, the two most important days in your life are the day that you are born and the day you find out why. The importance of a clearly defined purpose is widely acknowledged, however, it is not always easy to clearly define what your purpose is. Now, the first and most basic point to understand is exactly what is meant by purpose. You may have heard it referred to as your why, which is great, but it poses the same question. What is your why? Essentially, this is it's your reason for doing or creating something. Your why is what gives you a sense of determination. It's what gets you motivated and keeps you motivated. Your purpose, the reason why you do something, is what makes you outcome driven. Uncovering your purpose means you are able to take action and you are able to take action because when you know what your purpose is, 
You understand the meaning behind everything, everything that you do. Understanding your purpose matters because it is the answer to taking back control, especially when you are faced with times in your life when you lose your way. But when you are lost and you have purpose, you can always find your direction again. To learn more about finding your purpose, check out episode 12 of my podcast where I dive deeply into the process. Number three, your body. Give your body what it needs. Now, that's easier said than done, but there will come a time when your body will give up on you. For some, it's as simple as weight gain, and for others, it can be result, it can result in stress-related illness or worse. There are three universal things that you can do to facilitate restoration, and they are moving, eating, and sleeping. Now, movement is critical to your long-term survival. Um, Notice I didn't say exercise because this is normally associated with pain. The key is movement and regular movement. This allows your body and mind to recalibrate and align. Improving your mental health requires about 20 to 30 minutes of continuous movement, but as little as five minutes of outdoor movement can have a meaningful impact on your psychology. Movement also helps remove negative energy from the body and this helps lighten the load. What you eat is important, and this applies to food and drink. Many CEOs are known to overeat and consume excess alcohol. What you put in your mouth will impact your mood and your energy. I have battled with food and drink my entire life, and as a result, my weight has fluctuated significantly. What I have discovered is to avoid foods that make me feel tired and too full, for example, carbohydrates and sugars do me do me more harm than good, so I avoid them. I drink alcohol only a few times a week so that I maintain clarity and sleep better too. So assess what you are eating and drinking and how it makes you feel, then make the necessary changes to avoid the negative impact on your mood. Now, more recently, to combat my weight, I've practiced several forms of fasting and I finally uncovered one that works and that I can maintain. This is different for everyone, and please consult your clinician before taking on or tackling fasting. I have settled for a 48 hour fast once a week, followed by 18-6 intermittent fasting for the remainder of the week. Now, on the intermittent fasting days, I also uh, regulate my caloric intake. Uh, This process allows me the flexibility to still indulge in a long lunch once a week, date night with Lucy, and a weekend activity with friends. So we have covered movement and eating, so let's talk sleep. Improving sleep quality is the simplest way to reduce fatigue, uh, regulating your mood, and clearing your brain. It's also It also helps in re-engineering your cells, which is fundamental to avoiding burnout, let alone overcoming one. Now, getting the right amount of sleep differs from person to person, and it can range between six and 10 hours, depending on your needs. The key is to reach the point where you feel alert for most of the day. Now, for me, the ideal time frame is six hours, but I can perform with less if required. Number four, your reality. What you can actually change and the sources uh, to meet your needs are critical to preventing burnout. Your circumstances around workload and the mental load play a significant role in burnout. If you are unsupported, unappreciated, and feel unsafe, then this too causes exhaustion and fatigue, which can lead to burnout. If this is your reality, then you must decide to remove yourself from those circumstances or modify your expectations. You could stop expecting satisfaction and reward in your workplace and replace it with external interests and hobbies that supplement this need. Um, The key to avoiding uh, the mental and physical drain on you is to invest time in things outside of your work environment and surround yourself with people that support you and invest in you. This is um, where a mentor, advisor or coach can play a significant role in your well-being. Uh, Some simple things that you can do to regulate your reality is to breathe, 
have breaks and practice mindfulness. So breathing is critical and, and very empowering. We rely on oxygen to survive and our cells and organs depend on it. Doing intensive breathing exercises has many uh, benefits and I recommend the Wim Hof breathing app for guided breathing. It's free and it only takes 10 minutes. I find it rewarding and enjoyable and it's one of the best tools in my toolbox. Uh, breaks, take five minutes for every 20 minutes of focus work. Stretch your legs and get out of your environment. This will make you more productive and help you retain more information. Practice mindfulness daily as this will help you manage your emotions and give you clarity, especially during a crisis. Mindfulness is a practice and driven by three components, intention, attention, and attitude. When you practice mindfulness, your thoughts tune into what you are sensing in the present rather than rehashing the past or even exploring the future. Number five, reduce demands. This is about structural change. And by this, I mean decreasing your load. Start by reviewing your role, the tasks you must perform, and the outcomes you need to achieve. Once you have the exhaustive list, Determine what you must keep. Delegate, uh, keep, delegate, or delete. Once you've done this process, you can systematize and automate, and this will reduce your demands. Too many CEOs get caught up with the ideology that more is better and more is your duty. Wrong. In fact, less is more, because as a CEO, it's about strategy and leadership, and for this, you need less tasks and more thinking time. It's also important to note that reducing demands increases control. In addition to reducing demands, a good evidence-based technique that will help you increase control by helping you regulate emotions, particularly when you are feeling overwhelmed, is reappraisal and distraction. Rather than being overwhelmed, reframe your challenge into an opportunity and refocus. A good example is a new CEO who is feeling daunted by the challenge of delivering a pitch, might reframe it as an opportunity to build a new skill. Number six, get help and increase support. This can be in the form of hiring a business advisor, a coach, a mentor, or a clinician. Depending on how far down the burnout track you've come, you cannot expect to do this alone. Many top performing CEOs attribute their success to their advisors, coaches, and mentors. It's not a secret. How many world champion athletes in uh, the world have coaches? From Olympic athletes to political leaders, the best of the best have a coach. So why should business leaders be any different? Make sure you find someone who has been there, understands the journey, has failed, and succeeded. Business as usual is hard enough for most business owners. You need to find someone who has captained the ship uh, through the storms before. This will give you uh, the very best chance to thrive rather than just survive. Serial entrepreneurs are amongst the very best advisors because they have sailed the ship into many storms. They've put themselves under enormous pressure and have built remarkable resilience. For many CEOs, this is where you will fail. They will not seek out help. They will try to steer their ship on their own. And you, you are not born to do this on your own. Consider your individual situation by reviewing the implications such as finances, your team, your family, your emotion, and your customers. This is about clarity and direction and support. Give yourself the very best opportunity possible to navigate away from the risk and back into control by having a sounding board and a fresh set of eyes. If it's a financial constraint, join a mastermind group. They start from as little as $1,000 a month. This peer-to-peer -peer mentoring has many advantages beyond a low entry cost. It allows you to engage with other CEOs who share similar experiences and this helps you build human connections. Number seven, human connection. Human connection matters more than ever because we live in a fast paced digital age where 
Everyone is busy and we ignore what makes us human. And that is other humans. People are becoming so disconnected with reality and we are being fed with lots of bad and negative news. Just look at all the new channels, the propaganda and the fake news. It's all over your devices. Yes, that bloody smartphone, desktop and laptop are causing irreversible damage to your mind. People influence people. So be careful whose content you are consuming. In fact, um, well, in the same token, you become like the top five people that you hang around with. Now, I'm not sure who said that, but it's true. Therefore, choose your human connections wisely and flourish. By having a tight-knit circle of trust who share the same ambitions and values, it helps you connect to your purpose and helps you grow as an individual and your business. So for CEOs, get back to basics and reconnect with your key stakeholders. This may be your leadership team, shareholders, suppliers, and key customers on a human level. Pick up the phone and say, hi, don't try and give them a new shiny task, promote your bottom line, or sell them something. Instead, engage in a meaningful conversation. Why? Because your stakeholders are your fuel, and most humans feel isolated, unloved, lonely, and alienated because the world is increasingly driven by technology and tasks. This will help you get to know your stakeholders better and it will help you evolve your products and your services offering, which, will, which should lead to business growth through better understanding of your stakeholder needs and wants. Above all, it has the possibility to invigorate your why and get you out of that I can't get going stage. It gives you purpose and drives action, which often creates positive vibes that help you feel accomplished, combating the pains of exhaustion, fatigue, and early burnout. So we have almost come to the end, but I have left the best to last because this is about future-proofing you from burnout. The bonus is to establish growth mindset principles. Growth mindset principles will help you develop a fresh and more positive outlook on life. Now, I won't take you through these now because this is the part where you help yourself. I want you to go to my article on entrepreneur.com that was one of the top five rated articles in the world. Yes, in the world. You can find it in the show notes or you can Google www.entrepreneur.com and search my name, Christian Lavolsi, in the search tab. In this article, I provide you with 10 steps to achieve a growth mindset in business and in your life. And I know this will serve you because it has served millions of readers, my clients and I. These insider secrets will help you avoid exhaustion and fatigue, which will reduce your risk of burnout. It will help your self-confidence. It will help you take back control and increase your self-awareness. These factors will help you empower others and get them into action. More importantly, you'll become more fulfilled because when you are taking action every day on the things that matter, you will immediately reduce your load and feel accomplished. Despite the challenges and disruptions that we uh, face with today, we are blessed with an abundance of opportunity and by developing a growth mindset, those opportunities will become more apparent and you will give yourself the best opportunity to grow and flourish. I have really loved hanging out with you today and sharing my tips that will help avoid burnout and give you back control. I hope you implement these tips that I have shared with you today and you can put them into practice immediately. Please don't wait. Purpose has become a cornerstone in my teaching and advising of CEOs. Knowing the habits and principles of success will allow you to move forward with courage and action. Building courage is a key instrument in accelerating my client's growth and deepening their impact both professionally and personally. I want this for you and this is why I share my knowledge and experience with you each and every week. If you loved today's episode and are enjoying the series, please take a minute to rate it and provide a review. 
This helps others know that the content I'm sharing is valuable, but also inspires me to share more content with you. Please take care during this time, be kind and be courageous. And until next week, live with purpose.